Hi, I'm Patty Cake, and this is my best friend, Brent. We've been besties for a while now, and one of the things we bonded over was our shared love of Mad Libs. On Christmas a few years ago, Brent pitched the idea to me to create a show where we use AI art to accentuate the humor of Mad Libs. Three weeks later, we started filming, and we haven't stopped since. Through this project, we hope to share our weird humor and to highlight both the unexpected beauty and complete absurdity of AI-generated art. Welcome to Mid Journey Mad Libs. Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, please come in and make yourself at home. My name is Patty Cake, and welcome to Patty Cake Games and another episode of Mid Journey Mad Libs. And Happy New Year, everybody! Happy New Year, Brent. Happy New Year! <laughs> I'm here, as always, with my best friend, Brent. How you doing? Happy New Year. Tink. I'm, tinking, I'm, tinking, I'm good. I'm tinking my glass on the edge of my frame. Tink. Like, whenever y'all uh, yeah. see this, I'll be in tent. Yes, he will be camping. So, so. I will be at home. So let's toast. Let's toast while we're while we're here and we're talking about the new year. Let's toast to the new year. What are we toasting to? What are we hoping to achieve in this new year? A thousand new followers. <laughs> okay, let's shoot realistically. <laughs> okay, in the first six months. <laughs> <laughs> Here's to 2024. Let's hope it's a great one. <laughs> Happy I New Year, everybody! Up. I'm so I'm so glad that y'all are here this year. I'm going to take off the screen. Snap! Go! <laughs> uh, it's like I'm, I'm like the P Leprechaun or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get started. You guys know how this works. We send each other Mad Libs. We send each other answers to go into those Mad Libs. We then take those Mad Libs. We run them through Mid Journey. We create art. We get together. We share that art with each other, and we laugh. And that's the show, and we hope you like it. And if you do like it, look down below the video. There's a button just for you. It's a thumbs up button. That just means you like the video. And if you're clicking on that, right next to it, there's a subscribe button. Doesn't cost a thing, and it helps out this channel a whole lot. And if you're going to subscribe, you might as well click the notification bell. That lets you know when new videos get posted to the channel. All right, that's my starting spiel. We can actually do the show now. You go first. <laughs> um, between the, the last two episodes um, and these two episodes, I went to Philadelphia for PAX Unplugged. <laughs> and I'm and, so happy for you and not at all jealous. <laughs> but I did, you know, tell people about our show. I did wear our shirt there. I know that there were a few people who hit subscribe while they were there. And thank y'all for subscribing. I yes. do hope y'all love our show. Thank you um, very much. We really appreciate it. Welcome to the future. How appropriate. That's where you are. It's the year 2024. And life is hard. <laughs> it looks a little cyberpunk also. It's funny because I made this and it, the next prompt will, will be funny for you. Now, I will say that it was actually, it did ask me to give Patrick a number or ask for a number. And I arbitrarily put 2024 since this is the first day of the year. Yeah. I thought that'd be cool. Yeah, it makes sense. Or it could be 20 in 202, which is... Wow, long way. Right, 20 and 202. We're starting. That's, that's, that's a really, really long time from now. And I'm really happy to see that Way Hainer is still open in 20 and 2022 because it's my favorite store. And hoodies. <laughs> and it's almost, and it's almost still a it's, thing. It's almost as good as Goss Spy, which I'm glad to see is right across. In 2024, a group of bleached robots have taken control of Nippon. <laughs> are those the bleached robots oh no i see the bleached robots are in the front okay i missed them at first why doesn't she have a face what, what oh, happened to her um, face <laughs> it, 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 it's it's see it <laughs> see it's back <laughs> why do the bleached robots look like sheep right they're but they kind of look like chickens too because they're two-legged and they have wings they're like sheep chickens yeah. <laughs> Sheep chickens. <laughs> That's not scary. They're using their magic weapons to turn sparkling human beings into incarcerated safari pets. <laughs> it looks like a magician act and his animal companion for the act. If the animal companion was like his assistant as well. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's got cat paw hands too. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> it may be mid transition. Oh, that's so weird. <laughs> Things are bad. There are runt like sharp knives oozing strips. Knives are not really known for their oozing. I stand corrected. <laughs> These don't look particularly runt like, but there were some runt like ones, definitely. Uh, um, but they I get the I get the impression that they're just slowly sliding across the street, which makes me think of oozing, so I stand corrected. Knives can ooze. It isn't safe anymore. We used to be able to plummet outside, but not anymore. But we used to be able to plummet yeah. outside, but not anymore. Yeah, we can't. We can't. So fall I'm not sure. Well, Is no, he just like he frozen can't. in midair? Yes, now? he's stuck. He's stuck in midair because he can't fall anymore because you can't plummet outside anymore. When you go out, you mean he needs to go back inside. Then he can fall the rest of the way to the floor because while he's outside, he just sort of stays there. A dorsal appendage could see you and throw you in the end. Anacondaland Jail. What? <laughs> Ah, it's like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. <laughs> He's a pod person. It's so strange. I mean, even everything in it, even the background, like the backdrop. Like, who builds, like, a wall or a fence that looks like that? That doesn't make any sense. That looks like that looks like something you would do on, like, a stage show if you wanted to yeah. present the idea of a prison without actually building an actual prison. You'd make a backdrop like this. Sorry, oh, theater craft. This is true. Uh, yeah, I dig it. But, it, but, <laughs> but the, the, the shell thing in the front, the guy's head, that doesn't quite fit on his body either. It's sort of like sliding off. It's like it's melting. I <laughs> spoke to Jason about getting more Thai noodles. The stash that we have tastes like rotten hooves. <laughs> well, well, I think I have an idea why. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think we found the culprit. <laughs> also, it looks mysteriously like hay. It does, but <laughs> but it's funny because you can tell that from well, if if you didn't read the prompt to me, I would think it was hay. It just was poorly drawn hay. But knowing what the prompt is, I realize that it's yeah, it's, it's noodles. It's noodles that are in the shape of hay. <laughs> We're hiding out in the rear veranda now. But who knows what will happen next? Well, it looks like a nice rear veranda. It's very wide. Plenty of room for everyone. There's a lot of extra appendages and body parts, though, that are kind of unaccounted <laughs> for. I'm very glad you noticed <laughs> this. <laughs> like the lady in the blue dress there, I'm like, if, if that's her leg back there, A, right? it's quite, quite wrong with her foot, mm -hmm. and, and B, I'm, I'm worried about her knee. Mm -hmm. Where's the where the, the where's the torso and head that goes with those gray pants? Uh, yeah. yeah. And then there's yeah. just yeah. And then it's the person there with the, the blue jean shorts, maybe like about to barf. <laughs> she eats some of that that hoof, hoof flavored yeah, noodles. The hoof flavored noodles that made her sick. <laughs> oh. A group of angry moose men could strike at any time. Oh, those angry moose men. Oh, wow, they're very angry moose men. Actually, they don't look terribly angry, but they're they're moose men. <laughs> and I would be frightened. I mean, there, there might be a goat men back there too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think no, it's not. It's those, those ones well, they're not entirely good moose, are they? Their their antlers belie their moose. They look more like elk men. Yeah, they're more elk men. Maybe we should skip merrily once and for all. An odd piece of. Uh... Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, sorry, I was kind of sorry. I was so quiet for a couple of seconds. I was dumbfounded <laughs> by the red bands on her legs. <laughs> it's like I was just staring at them, trying to think. Okay, I can't figure out if that's like an intentional fashion choice, or if that's Mid Journey saying, "I don't know what the hell to do with these legs, so I'm gonna put red bands on them." <laughs> Sweat bands like in the gym. Right? <laughs> gonna use which, is, leg warmers. Which, which is totally out of place on this obviously period picture. <laughs> Maybe it's time to raise our leggings in the air. Fight for what's right. That's what heroes would do. Okay. So when you raise your leggings in the air, you're supposed to take them off first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, don't jump out of a window. <laughs> also, not leggings. 
No, no, those are pants. <laughs> Uh, that outfit is weird. <laughs> it's just weird. Like so. It's the future. Oh, oh that's true. It's the future. It's the the, the amazing year you know, of 2024. Like three weeks from now. Right. <laughs> it's time for some of the best honorable mentions you've ever seen. Hmm. Oh, welcome to 2024. Life is hard. I just had to include this because I really it's like cool. it. It's cool. It's cool. It's kind of steampunk with all the exposed gears and stuff and the color palette's very steampunk. I really think it's cool. Oh, <laughs> they're mannequins. <laughs> it's like that episode of Doctor Who, but creepier. Yeah, they're great. <clears throat> Next up we've got, oh, this, is this a car? Oh, yes it is. They are is adorable. A... Oh my God, I want them. <laughs> it is so amazing. They're using like, their magic weapons to turn sparkling human beings into a incarcerated safari cats. It is. They're using magic weapons, but they look like little space cadet kitties. It is. It, so it looks very Sid and Marty Croft and yeah. meets Lisa Frank. Oh yeah, totally. But this 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 crocheted like outfit they have on. Oh yes, this one is that's also adorable. one of those that's so great. This is it. It isn't safe anymore. We used to be able to plumb it outside, but not anymore. <laughs> and now we float with a little hot air balloon. That's so cool. It's very. It's vintage. It's it's very, it's very like posed professional photography, but it's just really nicely composed. I think it's pretty great. Oh, the yes, Thai noodles. Our, yeah, yeah we, need a, like, we need a new Thai noodles oh, because they taste like. Rotten hooves. Yeah. So, which is the bad one? Is he showing the bad one? Like, this is the stuff that we don't want anymore. <laughs> I'm it, thinking so. Cause it, those do it looks gross, gross compared to the other ones. Okay. Guys, we're hiding out of the rear of a of a hut. <laughs> of a hut <laughs> on a deserted island. I really think y'all should. You and know. Uh, and they need to repair it because she's obviously fallen through the boards because her feet are hanging <laughs> through the floor. And the other one is practicing her levitation powers. <laughs> as she bangs her wine, blows in the air in front of her by pointing her finger. <laughs> it's the rear. It's the rear, Miranda. <laughs> that dress is fierce, though. I'd love to see it. From, I'd love to see it from the front to see what the front looks like. That's a fabulous dress. We should skip Mara once and for all. Oh gosh, yeah. So it all becomes a musical at this point as they fight against the robots. <laughs> I mean, this is this is absolutely. And are great. they? I love how it turned into a military thing. Right, or or flight attendants? Are they flight attendants and um, pilots? I kind of see that too. Uh, that one woman has no tor no legs. She's just she just stops at the waist. I don't think let's let let's go with this guy is holding her. Oh, and again, her and legs are this up. Woman's and this guy's holding, holding her legs. Okay, okay, I can I can get behind that because it kind of now that you mentioned it, it does kind of look like she's like leaning this way and her body's out behind this guy in the front. Uh, who's oh he's so cool with his sunglasses those, and his his and cocky those, little stance <laughs> and those and those, those, those pants. mom pants those total mom pants <laughs> and maybe it's time to raise the leggings in the air fight what's right that's what heroes would do <gasps> like madam web <laughs> i'm like i i was so impressed with this also i got a full-on wonder woman from that prompt as well really interesting yes straight up perfect looking wonder woman hero Maybe I should... hero I'll take... her over here real hero fast. Take hero a hero grabs a lot of you know grab it grabs a lot of the prompt's attention if you use the word hero so i'm, I'm i'll tell y'all now i'm very confused about our future because um Three weeks from now doesn't look all that different, and I'm not sure I'm worried about these bleach robots who seem to not be able to do much more than waddle around. <laughs> right, and uh, just the idea that you won't fall anymore when you're outside, that's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. Imagine, imagine you know, how many entries you will save, you know? I trip on something while I'm cutting the grass, it's fine. I'll just sort of float in the air for a second until I can right myself. That doesn't sound so bad. And the rear verandas, I mean, well, the hut one was a little 
But the other river verandas seem pretty nice. Let's hear what Lady Shablagoo has to say. She Maybe she has some nice words of wisdom to take us into 2024. She's given me some hints, and she has said that there's going to be a quite of a big reveal, and maybe it doesn't quite follow the fairy tale line this time, but you'll appreciate it. And now, Country Fried Fairy Tales with Mother Shabla Goose. very special New Year's story for y'all. Once upon a time, outside the outskirts of a sleepy southern town, there was a locally famous restaurant called Lang's Steak, Seafood, and Catfish Dining and Emporium, which was just as big as its name. They had three different dining rooms, a fancy one for special occasions with a dress code, a casual family dining area with a more relaxed vibe, and the very casual catfish deck which was in the back on a huge wooden deck facing the river behind the restaurant. There was even an emporium where they sold all sorts of knickknacks, novelties, and even crafts the locals had made. Lang's had a place for everybody. Almost. But that's where the Lang sign came in. You see, during the late 50s when old man Lang expanded the sleepy little diner his mama had opened right after the depression into the huge dining destination and overall experience it became, he decided that the only way to advertise his new and improved Langs was to build a big old sign near the two busiest roads in the area. He'd leased a spot from the Bethlehem AME Church in a big grove of trees between the road and their parking lot. The sign was big, flashy, and impossible to ignore. And beneath the sign was a small building that was almost all kitchen with a covered seating area outside. It was called Julia Mays, after Mr. Lang's mother, and for years, it was the best kept secret in those parts. You see, segregation was years from going away, and old Augustus Lang decided he was gonna figure out a way to serve delicious food to all the people in the area, and not just the white ones. Julia Mays' food was just as good as Lang's big old restaurant, with just a little more soul food on the menu. Anybody could eat at Julia Mays, but only if you knew it was there and nobody questioned why there were cars parked in the church parking lot all days of the week, except Mondays. Now, let's fast forward a few decades. Augustus Lang had passed, and his three children ran the family businesses. Anybody at all could eat at the Big Langs, and the church had expanded and moved across the street. But Julia May still opened up for lunch Mondays and Wednesdays, and 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. And Old Lang Sign was a favorite place for the young people to hang out on nights and weekends. Now, why have I been telling you this tale about a restaurant and a big old sign? Well, once upon another time, there was a lovely charming girl. Not quite a princess, but her daddy treated her like one, and she liked hanging out at the sign occasionally with her friends, too. Her name was Magnolia, and she was funny, friendly, a little mischievous, and nearly always good to have at a party. The stories she could tell. One Friday, during football season, Magnolia went to celebrate, beating their biggest rivals with her fellow cheerleaders and most of the team. Everyone just said, meet up at Old Lang Sign, and they all knew what that meant. But this particular night, a new fellow was at the sign that Magnolia had never seen before. He was cute, but a little nerdy, and that's just what Magnolia liked. You see, she might have been pretty and popular, but she loved learning, and she liked boys who did more than talk about hunting dogs, fixing cars, and who smashed beer cans on their foreheads. She asked around and found out Benjamin was his name. He'd come to the game to watch his cousin, the football quarterback, play in the rivalry game before a big family reunion the next day. Benjamin was a freshman way over at the University of Georgia, and our Magnolia had caught his eye too. He wasn't particularly shy, but she was exceptionally pretty in his eyes, and after a can of liquid courage, he introduced himself to the young lady without any help from his quarterback cousin and she was caught off guard, which was a pretty rare thing. You see, she was whispering with her friends about how she should go about meeting this out state visitor, when suddenly, all of their eyes got huge. Before she could turn around to see what caught their attention, a deep voice behind her said, What if I just walk over and talk to you, ma'am? Her friends suddenly scattered, and she turned to look into the bluest eyes she had ever seen. 
She was blushing something fierce and couldn't think of a thing to say. So he continued, I believe your name is Magnolia, and I'm pretty sure you know my name is Benjamin. And I wasn't going to leave this place without asking you out. That is, if you're not already taken. Now that the shock had worn off and Miss Magnolia had managed to gather her wits and her wit, she replied, You would be correct on both counts. I'd be happy to go out with you, but you'll have to meet my parents first. And I'll let it slide that your question implied I'm some sort of property that can be taken, seeing as you were just being polite. But I'm my own woman. Then she grinned and added, No one shall be taking me, but I might be wooed by the right boy. Then she amended, Or man. And right then and there, Benjamin knew this plucky young lady was just about perfect so far. She, in fact, accompanied him to his family reunion the very next day, which wasn't all that weird since 90% of the folks there knew her already. Her parents found it more than a little charming that he showed up just after breakfast the next day to ask their permission to take her as his date to the reunion. And a short distance romance began. Benji started visiting his cousins whenever his studies allowed and Magnolia's short list of colleges got a lot shorter. When she started matriculating at the U of G the following year, they were already an item and there was no other fish in the sea for her. Benjamin graduated a semester early and immediately started his graduate studies and Magnolia was just a year and a half away from getting her BA. During Christmas break, during her senior year of college, they both headed back to her hometown after spending a few days with his parents until Christmas day in Georgia. So they could ring in the new year at her daddy's once every five years, New Year's Eve blowout. New Year's Eve came around and she was at the house of her best friend, Clarice, getting ready for the party and waiting for Benjamin to pick her up so they could head to her parents' house when Clarice's phone rang. Clarice had her own phone line in the house, and that was a big thing back then. Clarice was in the middle of curling her hair with a curling iron. Max, could you grab that? Magnolia picked up the handset and said sweetly, Clarice's phone, Magnolia speaking. Oh, good, I caught you. It was her mother. What's up, Mama? Is everything okay? We're not late, are we? Oh, no, baby. Everything is lovely. But could you have Benji swing by my old Lang sign on your way over? Miss Betty over at Julia May's baked me some pies, and I simply don't have time to pick them up from her. Sure, Mama. I'll let Clarice and Benji know we have to make a quick stop. Thank you, baby. I love you more than you can imagine. Bye. Magnolia stared at the phone, wondering at her Mama's final declaration. But before she could ponder further, the doorbell rang, and Clarice, who usually took forever to get ready, was somehow finished her hair and makeup during the short phone call. She looked more excited about the party than even Magnolia was and they rushed downstairs, where Benjamin had flowers for the both of them, which he presented with a flourish before ushering them to the car. He didn't mind taking a quick detour to grab pies at all, though he wasn't normally the complaining type even if he had minded. He also seemed just as giddy about her daddy's party as Clarice had been, and he smelled like expensive cologne. After five minutes of driving, old Lang sign came into view, and it didn't look quite right. But it was still too far to tell what was different and she even said something about it. As they got closer, Benjamin clasped her hand in his and commented that the sign did indeed look different. They pulled into the parking lot and she saw that the whole sign was covered in a huge canvas top and there were cars everywhere. Looks like people were planning their New Year's Eve party right here. How odd. After helping Clarice and Magnolia out of the car, Benjamin let out a nearly ear spritting whistle and seconds later, Magnolia noticed two ropes on either side of the big old sign moved which caused another huge top to unfurl with a giant question printed on it. Mr. Shelby B. Good humbly requests to be taken as the lawful wedded husband of Mac Miss Magnolia Eloise Hawthorne. She turned to look at her Benjamin and realized he was on bended knee beside her, holding up a tiny box with the shiniest piece of jewelry she had ever seen. His face looked so earnest, but this time, though caught completely off her guard, Miss Magnolia Hawthorne, the Southeastern Conference debate champion two years running, had her wits firmly about her, and so she arched her brow at her bow, then turned to the huge sign and firmly yelled, I am sorry, Mr. Shelby Good, but it seems that I am already taken by a handsome and clever and very attentive fella named Benjamin, and I think I shall marry him instead. Suddenly, cheers and clapping erupted from the small grove of trees under the sign and both sets of their parents and more relations than she thought could possibly fit among those trees came walking into view. And it turns out, we were already at my dad's big old New Year's celebration. Oh my. Did I just say my daddy? Oops. Okay, y'all. Just in case you're slow on the uptake, 
I'd like to take this time to reintroduce myself to you all. You see, my name is Magnolia Hawthorne Good, and this is my fairy tale. And believe me, I did live happily ever after with a cute nerdy boy with the deepest voice and the bluest eyes I ever did see, who I first met beneath Old Lang Syne. Happy New Year, y'all. I'll save the stories about that party and my wedding one year later for another time. Why not reach out to an old acquaintance and remind them they aren't forgotten? Unless you'd like to keep them forgotten. Till next time. Bye, y'all. Happy New Year. Well, that was certainly a reveal. And a really nice story, too. Yes, it was very good. <laughs> All right. Well, let's do my Mad Lib now. So I thought, since we're going into 2024, let's go ahead and start with just a little touch of nostalgia and remember some TV shows from the 90s. So yeah, this, right in our heyday. Yep. So this is Television Gold, all about TV shows from the 90s. It's also rather short, so there's quite a few, uh, there's quite a few uh, honorable mentions to go along with it. All right. What's about pretzels? <laughs> all right, here we go. Oh, also, just for the viewers at home, I'm starting to lose my voice, so apologies. Uh, I might sound a little... <sighs> All right. Stay at home or set your VCRs to embark. So this is reminiscent of your veranda picture. The TV has, like, the front half of a dog, and the bottom half is on the floor next to it. <laughs> so I'm really confused about how this works. And why are there so many people in this one room? <laughs> like, is that somebody's legs behind him? Yeah. Or, or that's like it's a torso or something behind him, and then there's legs next to him. And then there's, there's like, somebody else behind them, and then there's a guy that looks like he's flipping somebody off. <laughs> and then there's a guy in the corner who looks like they're in a hospital gown. Yeah. Right? And then the woman in the window looks like she might be a nurse because she looks like she might have scrubs on. So is this an asylum, possibly? <laughs> <laughs> that could explain the old TV. <laughs> you won't want to miss these crowded 90s TV shows. Now, I would normally pick an image and like use that image but this is actually the four suggested images that the prompt gave me when you want to stay home and watch these 90s tv shows so these are the ones that you're staying home to watch these four shows you know we've got the the sitcom about the italian dad the top left <laughs> and we've got the law show yeah the it looks top like a right law firm. like a law yeah. firm show then we have the three black sisters show that has had a, i think probably at least three iterations during the 90s the bottom <laughs> left corner yeah. and then the bottom right corner is the like 80s parody cop show yeah i was gonna say it looks like a <laughs> like parody cop, totally. like cop rock you remember cop rock <laughs> so here's the shows you don't want to miss party of 25 <laughs> on this on this episode Charlie gets cold heads on his wedding day. Um, <laughs> that does not look like Scott Wolf. And no. yes, I did not have to look that up because I watched Party of Five religiously. <laughs> but it, so, it took it so literally, like, it's snowing, so his head is cold. <laughs> but the thing that made me laugh is that he's wearing the veil. <laughs> why, why is he wearing the veil? Oh, it's so great. Now it's all making me miss Nev Campbell and Lacey Chavez. And... <laughs> oh, boy. Full magazine. <laughs> Sorry, this is probably not going to be what I think it is, but let's see. Uncle Jesse announces with his band, and DJ joins the suitcase team. Well, it almost looks like John Stamos. I know. <laughs> that hair. <coughs> the hair and like the, I, I don't know what's going on next to him. It, it's it like, looks like something is exploding and the, and like the, the impact waves are like distorting the yes. side of his face. Yes. Yes. I was thinking like a ghost is punching him, but that's a much better way of describing it. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it's just plain weird. Like that. Okay, well, you know how obsessed I am with like bags and cool bags and stuff like that. And if, uh-huh. if, if that's what DJ gets in the suitcase club, I'm like, I need to sign up. <laughs> Beavis and Hairhead. <laughs> I'm picturing all of these words because I was sitting on the plane when I was making them, and all I could see was hair, you know? (laughs) So Beavis and Hairhead. This week, these hilarious animated characters try to fly in each other's ears. (laughs) I wonder which one's Hairhead. (laughs) (laughs) Right? I I just can't tell. (laughs) <laughs> that is so poo. I know, there's poo I just, all over the table. <laughs> I just realized what's going on there. I don't know if it's that's poo. Like, let's, let's just say it's like, it's not. Let's say it's something else. It's, uh... I'm, mm, yeah. I don't know Apple what sauce. I... Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's you know what sauce. it is? It is it, it, they're mad because somebody left the guacamole out and did not put some <gasps> lime juice in first. Excellent, yes. It's, so it turned brown, yes. <laughs> So they decided to fly in each other's ears, because that's what you do when you mess up your guacamole. <laughs> Sabrina, the teenage flight attendant. <laughs> Sorry! Sabrina accidentally casts a seatbelt on her aunt that turns her into a curtain. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> She's holding the- <laughs> They got the plane thing down to the science. <laughs> that does not look like a flight attendant's uniform. No. But I'm down. This is so good. <laughs> and it's it's great because it it's like it did a combination of Melissa Joan Hart and Kieran Shipka. Yeah, it kind of both did. play Sabrina. It kind of <laughs> so did. it's like... Beverly Girls 90210. Donna studies <laughs> hard to get an E on her final exam. Not sure what they were asking her for. <laughs> Donna Martin graduates! <laughs> Donna Martin graduates! Sorry, I hope y'all get that reference. <laughs> wow. That is... Is that like a robot koala made? It kinda. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna write that down. Robot koala made. I, I, I need to make that. <clears throat> when Brent and I work together and do something together, a lot of times we get very in sync with each other because we're best friends. We've known each other for freaking years, and we always say we have our ginger telepathy because we're both redheads. So this is rare to suddenly head three times so far this season where we had an episode where both of us did wine, and then an episode where both of us did the Christmas song, and now it happened again. So... This is the last show that we're going to watch of the 90s. Jurassic Cigarette. A special presentation of the blockbuster movie about killer pterodactyls will air on Tuesday. Pterodactyls was his word, by the way. (laughs) Are you okay? Did I kill you with this prompt in this picture? Because it's pretty amazing. Honorable mentions to guarantee you're not. Okay, I'm not. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Stay home or set your VCRs to embark. <laughs> and while you're at it, just kind of melt in various body parts across the floor. <laughs> we'll clean up the mess later. <laughs> I'm very impressed that this same exact picture is on every screen. <laughs> that that also is... impressed me. <laughs> Because that doesn't that normally happen. Very cool, actually. <laughs> I mean, because I'm looking and I don't see any variation. Full magazine. Uncle Jesse announces with his band a DJ joins the suitcase team and it threw a random cat in for good measure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? And, wow, 
that, that hair. Right? They, they, they know who Uncle Jesse is. Beavis and Hairhead. <laughs> <laughs> they're trying to fly in each other's ears. They look like they are doing a pretty good job. I also <laughs> like that they're, they're in a field that looks like, like hair as hair, well. Yeah, it's, it's just hair everywhere. Hair. Hair. Here is, I think, the same prompt. Yeah, it's the same prompt. Beavis and Hairhead. <laughs> they're trying to fly in each other's ears. Is that Daria? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's just weird. Our 90s are showing, aren't they? <laughs> right? It's totally showing. No, yeah. This is Sabrina, the teenage flight attendant. Sabrina accidentally casts a seatbelt on her aunt that turns her into a curtain. And apparently her uncle got turned into Superman. <laughs> I don't so know how got, that happened. <laughs> so we got Superman, Madam Web, and Wonder Woman all in the all same episode. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> had nothing to do with superheroes. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> Beverly Girls 90210. Donna studies hard to get an E on her final exams. Um, okay. <laughs> this is like Tori Spelling the... is going to sue us. <laughs> it's like it's from the movie <laughs> Smile. <laughs> She's a very, very attentive and friendly salesperson. Mm. Would you like to buy some of these things? Do you like my plastic hair? <laughs> and I think that is it. That is the end of my Mad Lib for the week. Or for the day. Oh, this is the end of my so Mad Lib for great. the day. I don't know why I keep saying that. <laughs> that was a good one. We just burst into the new year. Well, that was fun. I hope you guys have a great new year. Great beginning to your year. Hope you're not too hungover from last night. Brent, happy new year to you, my friend. Happy new year. And uh, too bad you're not hanging out in the wilderness with me. <laughs> Yeah, we'll need to go camping again sometime soon. I kind of miss that. All right, well, we're out of here, guys. Make sure you click on like and subscribe. We'll see you guys on Thursday. Like and subscribe. The algorithm demands it. <laughs>